You might not be able to buy a new smartphone next year because of a drought currently affecting Taiwan. Here's how that works. Taiwan's worst drought in decades could further strain an already unstable global supply chain for production of the semiconductors that power the world's notebooks, monitors, TVs, smartphones, tablets, and cars. In an average year, Taiwan receives 2,500 millimeters of rainfall, the most of any OECD equivalent country, according to Taiwan Business Topics. However, while typhoons usually hit Taiwan from the east during the rainy season and help replenish reservoirs, in 2020, for the first time in 56 years, no typhoon made landfall. The effect has been a drastic drop in water supply, with water levels at the country's largest reservoir, Tsengwen, falling to their lowest in 15 years, and the Baihe Reservoir now completely dry, according to the AFP. Taiwan's semiconductor industry is vulnerable to the drop because its processes for cleaning chips and creating a hypersterile environment for their production are water-intensive. AFP reports its largest manufacturer, TSMC, alone goes through 156,000 metric tons of water a day. Other sectors are also vulnerable. According to the CIA World Factbook, industry uses 10% of Taiwan's water supply, households use 20%, and agriculture up to 65%, despite the latter contributing just 1.8% of GDP. Lack of storage capacity makes Taiwan vulnerable to climate change. Citing Taiwan's Water Resources Agency, Taiwan Business Topics reports reservoirs only constitute around 25% of its water supply, with rivers providing almost 50% and groundwater extraction 30%. Taiwan can store only around a month and a half's water requirement. One possible solution to the crisis, building more dams, remains unlikely as the ideal locations have already been used. Taiwan Business Topics also notes that Taiwan's mountains and lack of an extensive river system mean most rainfall is washed into the sea. If that video made you thirsty for more knowledge about climate change's effect on water supply, check out how Cape Town could become the first major city to run out of water and how Ethiopia built Africa's largest dam. The United Arab Emirates wants to build a mountain to solve a drought because… Why not? If there's one country that likes to think big, it's the United Arab Emirates. When faced with a water shortage, the country is ditching the boring option to conserve and instead has opted to build a huge mountain for more rainfall. Compared to the international average of 170 to 300 liters, an average United Arab Emirates resident uses 550 liters of water daily. This is especially problematic as water in the region is in very short supply due to the arid climate and naturally low rates of precipitation. The government has already turned to artificial methods. $558,000 were spent on cloud seeding in 2015. Now $400,000 is going towards funding a development plan for man-made mountains. Mountains force air to rise up into the atmosphere. There, air cools and become clouds that can then be seeded for rain. The cloud seeding can have undesirable outcomes such as too much rainfall or none at all. Due to the rain shadow effect, an artificial mountain can inhibit rainfall on one side, causing that area to become more parched. Experts from the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research in the U.S. are in the early stages of the project. A modeling study is being carried out to determine the location, height, and width of the mountain. No water in Cape Town One of the biggest cities in South Africa may soon be the first major city in the world to run out of water. Cape Town is facing a water crisis and has less than 100 days before day zero on April 21st, when the water supply is expected to run out. Years of extreme drought have caused storage levels in dams to drop below 30 percent. Once it falls to 13.5 percent, taps in the city will be shut off. Local authorities restricted water usage to 87 liters per person per day, but after only 39 percent of residents complied, the limit has now been lowered to 50 liters. Its 4 million residents are being told to take two-minute showers and have been banned from filling pools, watering gardens or washing cars. Households that go over their water allowance will also be asked to pay higher tariffs. After day zero, citizens will need to line up at one of 200 water collection points throughout the city, where each can collect a maximum of 25 liters a day. Authorities have also been looking into alternative ways to source water, like wastewater recycling, drilling into aquifers, or seawater desalination. Obama drinks water from Flint amid lead contamination crisis. need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. U.S. President Barack Obama asked for a drink of water while giving a speech in Flint, Michigan on Wednesday. 
Keep in mind, Flint is in the middle of a lead contamination crisis. Flint previously changed their water source from the Detroit system, which draws water from Lake Huron, to the Flint River in April 2014 as a cost-saving option. But reports found Flint River's water is more corrosive than Lake Huron's and caused high levels of lead to leach out of the city's aging pipes into the water supply. Initial studies done on the water showed that it had exorbitantly high amounts of bacteria and chemical pollutants, which necessitated high levels of chlorination. A year and a half after the change in Flint's water source, many residents reported experiencing hair loss and rashes. Based on records, there are 4,376 known lead pipes throughout the city. An estimated 4,000 plus lines may also contain lead, bringing the total to more than 8,000. A state of emergency was declared in Flint in January, which prompted officials to distribute water filters and clean bottled water. President Obama is even urging local residents to get blood tests for their children. But he also assured residents they would be fine in the long term, even as he admitted that there had been a complete screw-up and that it would take more than two years to replace the aging pipes in the city. But he drank some water while in Flint, so obviously everything will be just fine. Cities that could run out of drinking water. Stop wasting water. No, seriously. As global fresh water supplies become scarce, several major cities across the world could run out of drinking water like Cape Town. Sao Paulo experienced a drinking water crisis in 2015 when its main reservoir fell below 4% capacity and also had reservoir issues in January of 2017. Bangalore's growing property market and tech industry have outpaced the city's ability to manage water and sewage systems. The city's water pipes also lose half its drinking water to waste. Beijing will increasingly struggle to meet its water needs in the future. Figures from 2015 showed 40% of the city's surface water was so polluted, it was not even suitable for agriculture or industrial use. Other cities at high risk are Cairo, Jakarta, Moscow, Istanbul, Mexico City, London, Tokyo, and Miami. Anyone else thirsty? Cape Town needs a whole lot of water. You shouldn't waste water. No, seriously. Cape Town is running out of water and implemented new water restrictions Thursday, reducing the previous 87-liter limit to 50 liters per day. Officials are predicting if reservoir levels continue to fall as expected, Cape Town will run dry by April 16th, which is being called Day Zero. With 50 liters, a person could theoretically use 18 liters for dishes and laundry, 15 liters for a 90-second shower, 9 liters for one toilet flush, 3 liters for hygiene, 2 liters for cooking, 2 liters for drinking water, and 1 liter for pets. The city is now working to improve its water infrastructure by rushing to construct desalination, aquifer, and water recycling projects. If the government declares day zero, water will be shut off for the city until it rains again. Residents will only be allowed 25 liters to be collected from one of 200 stations throughout the city. Good thing people totally listen when told to conserve resources. Cape Town will be fine. Mexican chemical engineer Sergio Rico has invented a water-absorbent powder designed for use in times of extended droughts. When potassium polyacrylate comes into contact with water, it transforms from a white powder into a clear, jelly-like substance. Once potassium polyacrylate absorbs the water, it can be stored within the gel for up to a year without evaporating. The water within the potassium polyacrylate will only be absorbed by the soil when a plant's roots consume it. This water absorbent polymer, or solid rain, is made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and potassium. Farmers in Mexico have found their crop yield increase by 300% with the help of solid rain. Malaysian officials are planning to ration water as a solution to the water crisis. Planned water rationing in Malaysia would affect the Selangor region. Areas affected by the water crisis have been divided into two zones. Water will be pumped into Zone 1 for two days before being diverted to Zone 2 for another two days. This ensures no zone will be without water for more than two days. Water pressure is expected to be low, but residents should see running water for 30 hours consecutively. The reduction will take place in four stages. Water will be first reduced by 7%, the second by 10%, the third by 15 percent and finally by 20 percent. The water rationing measure is expected to affect residents statewide. 
Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan are starting to hammer out an agreement about a dam that had the entire region worked up. What's so damn important about it? Well, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is just the kind of grandiose name you can really trust, might choke off the water supply for everybody else. Ethiopia is building the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD. According to Al Jazeera, Africa's biggest dam is intended to create 12,000 jobs and turn Ethiopia into a regional powerhouse in energy exports. Upon completion, GERD will measure 1,780 meters long and 145 meters high. The dam's primary aim is to generate electricity with its 16 turbines that will have a capacity of 6,000 megawatts or four times Ethiopia's current energy capacity. GERD's reservoir, which Ethiopia has already begun filling, has a capacity of 75 billion cubic meters and the waters are overtopping the incomplete dam. This effectively gives Ethiopia control over 85% of the water that flows into the Nile. The Blue Nile is a major tributary to the Nile, which Sudan and Egypt rely on for fresh water and sediments needed for agriculture. According to Al Jazeera, the two downstream nations have declared GERD poses an existential threat. Perhaps a sign that things have turned a corner, Ethiopia's office of the prime minister announced in a tweet that rising water levels in the reservoir were due to heavy rains and that the nation's leaders are ready to talk about the dam. Are huge dams a good idea? Judging by China's experience and this pesky thing called climate change, we're going with a definitely, probably not. The Three Gorges Dam has been Beijing's touted symbol of modernity, scientific progress, and industrial might. But there's a catch. The world's biggest dam might not actually work. Reuters reports that China's Yangtze tributary is seeing record-setting water levels and deadly floods, as experts increasingly question whether the Three Gorges Dam can do the job it was designed for, keeping severe floods at bay. China started building the Three Gorges Dam in 1996, and the structure in Hubei province has been the world's biggest dam since its completion in 2012. Flood control is one of the main justifications for the project, as cyclical floods have been a historic problem in the region. The dam stands at about 594 feet tall and 7,770 feet wide. However, Reuters reports that this is not enough to cope with the river's water levels, which have risen to a 20-year high, citing the University of Alabama's David Shankman. CNN reports that since June, severe flooding has impacted 38.8 million people, including 2.24 million displaced residents and 141 dead or missing. What does China's Ministry of Water Resources have to say about this? At a news conference, Vice Minister Ye Jianchun said the water discharges were made according to a, quote, detailed schedule and that the Three Gorges Dam had been effectively controlling the floods. If you say so, buddy. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.